Hey everybody, welcome to Mold 3D. Uh, today we have a little bit longer tutorial on our part two of creating a snap-in pin for your characters. Before we get started, I just want to show you how it's made up of two key parts. We have the pin itself, which is the part that gets printed, and then we have the Boolean part, um, which is essentially the shape that cuts away the interior of our model. So. Um, if anything is confusing about that, just be sure to watch the video that uh, is part one of this series. Today we're going to model this in Maya because I feel it's a little, little easier for us. So the easiest way to get going is start off with a cylinder. And uh, we're going to use our existing pin as a guide for now. So let's go ahead and just shrink this down a little bit. And uh, I'm going to scale this in just a tad and uh, maybe a little bit bigger and scale that down and then I'm gonna hide this so the next thing I want to do is um, I want to flatten a po portion of this so um, you always want to give these pins a flat side it allows them to be printed um, on the build plate on this side so there's there's no worry about overhangs or anything like that they just print perfect uh, for the sake of this demo, I'm going to just work on half of this model, so I'm going to go ahead and delete. Um, actually, we're going to work on a quarter of this model, so I'm going to delete those other parts. Let's uh, go ahead and move this part down here. So now we're starting to get the center section done. And uh, we need to give ourselves a section of faces that we can extrude up. So I'm just going to cut that down from there to there, and uh, we're going to extrude this section up here so all the way up we're going to go right up to that edge so you can see how we're building um, a portion of our model already so and extrude that one more time and one more time again all right right up to the top so the last thing we want to do in this part is just we want to give this a nice taper so we're going to pull this all the way over that's pretty good and the, uh, the next thing is we need to give ourselves a edge to um, snap. So if this was just round and it didn't have any kind of overhang to it, um, it would not clip into anything. So let's go ahead and extrude that out a little bit. And uh, I'm going to give this thing a taper. Um, a good reason to give this a taper is that if this was a 90 degree angle here, once these go in, they would never come out. Um, and we don't necessarily want that. What if the pin breaks and you don't want to be fighting that? So I'm just going to make this top part a little bit more tapered to kind of match our previous shape. And uh, that's pretty good. And lastly, um, let's go ahead and grab these little points here and um, move them in to create a nice round shape here. So that's pretty much the shape that we want to go for. Let me reset all these normals and you can see what's going on. So we have a flat side um, and then a round side and then we have one quarter of our entire pin. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate this over and grab that and then duplicate down the Y. So now we have all four sides and then we're going to combine and then merge the matching vertices. So now we have a shape that is fully completed and ready to print and it's also uh, watertight. So the next thing we want to do is, so this is our pin shape, so I'm going to uh, move that over there and uh, it's just going to save that. We need to make a version of this that is the um, is this one so it's it's sort of the uh, the boolean object that we use to cut away and uh, we can derive that based off of our existing pin um, again I'm going to go ahead and just delete all of this extra stuff we don't need right now we're going to work on work on a quarter of this um, and let's uh, delete all these interior faces here get the best viewing angle make sure we don't select any of these back faces and then let's go ahead and delete that and then let's select our edge loop and then deselect these edges here and then we're going to extrude this over and then let's go ahead and merge these up so now we have a solid version 
of this uh, this uh, pin. So the last thing we need to do, let me hide that one. The last thing we need to do is give this thing some room. Uh, so let's put our existing pin back at center, and um, let's go ahead and throw that on the layer so we don't so we can see what we're doing. And uh, first thing we need to do is um, go to the top view, and uh, let's go ahead and move this. Uh, expand it this way so we just want to sort of inflate everything really let's bring this out that way so now we we've done we've done that direction we've done that direction now we need to do the vertical as well so let's go to the front view and um, let's go ahead and pull that up that way and then let's go to the side view and then we want to give us just a bit more room on that direction too so uh, maybe that's a bit too much room, so let's pull that back. All right, so it's there, there. So essentially, we've made a solid version, and then let's go ahead and mirror this around and uh, combine, and then mirror this down, and then combine. Merge up all our matching uh, vertices here. So. Now we have our Boolean shape. Um, we have our pin, and uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. So let's uh, let's jump into what these look like uh, after after they've been printed. Alrighty, so uh, we went ahead and 3D printed out uh, some cubes uh, for demonstration purposes. Uh, we have a cube that has the pin built into it. Um, which is great if you can do that. Um, certain characters you can print in a way that it prints uh, straight up and the pin is going upwards so uh, you can print it. Um, but sometimes you might have to print at angles and you don't want the pin built in so you can always print them out, pr print the pin out separately. So that's the pin itself. You can see it has the little edges there. I'm gonna do this uh, really close up for you real fast. So you can see it came out nice. And, um, and so we have uh, different cubes here. You can see the did a cross section and uh, I'm going to show you guys close up as well. See the little black spot right there? That's where the, the edge of the pin uh, locks into place. So uh, right there. There we go. Yep. So that pin essentially locks in right there. And um, if you did, a, if, so you can see how that this has the flat spot built in. Um, basically what's going to happen with this one is that uh, it doesn't let the object rotate, so it locks it in place. Um, if you did a round version of that cutter shape, um, this would allow the model to freely rotate um, 180 degrees. And uh, that's best illustrated on this character that we're showing in the first video, is we have our Octobot here. And uh, for the top head, we wanted the head to freely rotate around, so he's able to look around as he walks. And uh, you can see we put the pin in, and um, and we have one leg left, and uh, it's just gonna snap in like that. And uh, you have to be careful with these pins; they do break easily. Um, but you can always print another one, and uh, hopefully you can hear the little snap sound. And then it snaps right in there. And uh, so we have our Octobot completed with uh, all the pins in place, and um, and his head rotates. And we even did a small pin right there for the light, so we didn't have to print any supports. So this whole character prints. Uh, support free, which is really great. So thank you everybody for watching this Mol 3D tutorial. Hopefully that gives you some good insight on how to prepare and create pins for your characters, which we would love to see. So share with them on our Twitter and Facebook. And uh, be sure to subscribe to us below and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.